Welcome to this video. This project management video will discuss one of the well-known project planning tools. This is the network analyses. In this video, we will discuss the rules guiding the use of this tool and illustrate how this tool is used to plan projects. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. Network analyses is a more suitable planning tool for complex projects. It is used to illustrate the activities within the project in a logical sequence. As the name suggests, network analysis is used to draw a network of activities in a project while allocating time to each individual activity within the network. The aim of using a network is to analyze project activity times, identify critical activities, and the amount of float in the non-critical activities within the project. The most widely used method of a network analysis is the critical path method known as CPM. Apart from the critical path method, there are other network analysis methods. These are the PERT method that is program evaluation and review technique, the GERT method that is graphical evaluation and review technique, and the MPM method that is METRA potential method amongst other methods. For this video, we will be using the critical path method to illustrate how network analysis is used to plan project activities. Before we show you how this method is used, it is important you know that there are basic rules to drawing a network analysis. So, before we show you how to draw a network analysis with the aid of an example, let's go through the rules of drawing a network diagram. Network analyses are drawn using flow diagrams showing a sequence of activities and how these activities connect or transfer to the next activity. The point at which an activity transfers into the next activity is known as an event. When drawing the network, activities are represented using arrows while events are represented using nodes. Every activity in the network has a starting event and an ending event. All activities are identified using a title or symbol just above the arrow and the duration of the activity is stated below the arrow. This is the first basic rule of drawing a network analysis. For the second rule of drawing a network analysis, no two activity can be represented by the same starting and ending event. Where this is unavoidable, a dummy activity must be introduced into the network. Dummy activities are activities that do not require time nor resources and it is merely used to represent activity dependence within the project operations. For the third rule, when two chains of activities are interrelated, this can be shown by joining the two chains either by a linking activity or a dummy. In this case, the ending event or node for one activity is the starting node for another activity. This links to the fourth basic rule. Each activity, except for the last must run into another activity via a linking node. There must not be any loose ends or dangles. Dangles create premature ends of a part of a project, so that the relationship between this end and the actual final completion node cannot be seen. Considering this, Every loose ends must be joined to the final node to enable the analysis to be completed. If needed, a dummy could be applied here. However, caution must be taken not to overuse dummies in the network. The fifth rule is common sense really. This is when there is a loop within the network. A loop is when an activity flows backwards to a previous activity. In other words, this is a sequence that the last activity in the chain or network has an influence on the first. These are the five basic rules to drawing a network diagram. Feel free to pause the video here to memorize these rules. Before we show you an example while observing these rules, there are two terms you need to be familiar with. These terms are the project critical path and the project float. A project critical path refer to the network critical activities within the project and these activities can affect the finish time of the project. Within the network, the critical path is the longest estimated sequence or duration of interdependent activities. These activities must be accomplished on time to ensure completion of the project on its due date. As for the project float, this is also known as the slack and it refers to the amount of time the entire project can be delayed before it adversely impacts the deadline of the project. This is usually calculated by deducting the project earliest finish time from the latest finish time. 
Now that we have clarified these two concepts, we will use a simple example to show you how a network analysis is carried out or drawn. We will also calculate the critical path and the float of a project in this example. Here is an example. To produce this table, the project needs to be broken down into smaller easier to manage tasks or activities. Each of these activities are then labeled using letters or numbers, and time is allocated to each activity as shown on the table. A useful project planning tool to use here, although not covered in this video, is the work breakdown structure. Now that the table is ready, the next task is to draw the network diagram. For activity A, this activity starts with the first node or event 0 and ends with event 1. The duration of this activity is 2 months. Activities B and C have a common starting event which is 1. While the ending event for activity B is 2, the ending event for activity C is 3. The duration of these activities are 8 months and 10 months respectively. Activities D and E also have a common starting event indicating that activity B must be completed before they commence. The ending nodes for activities D and E are 4 and 5 respectively. Where activity D takes 6 months to complete, activity E takes 3 months. As for activities F and G again, these have common starting events or nodes. However, for activity F, it takes 3 months and shares the same ending event as activity D. This suggests activities that should be carried out in parallel. As for activity G, it takes 7 months to complete with 6 as its ending event. The next three activities H, I, and J have the same ending events which is 7. This suggests the project is coming to a close. For activities H, I, and J, their starting activities are 4, 5, and 6 respectively. The duration of these activities are 5 months, 2 months, and 8 months in the same order. Now that we have finished drawing the network diagram, we can now calculate the project critical path and the total project float. First the project critical path. Remembering that we defined the critical path as the longest sequence or path in the network. So let's go through each possible sequence to determine the longest path. If you carefully look through the diagram, there are four paths. The first is path A, B, E, and I. To sum up the duration of this path, we add 2 plus 8, plus 3, plus 2 months. This takes a total of 15 months to complete. The second path is A, B, D, and H, taking 21 months to complete. This we derived by adding the duration of these activities which is 2 months plus 8 months, plus 6 months, plus 5 months. Path 3 is A, C, F, and H. The duration of this path is the sum of 2 months, 10 months, 3 months and 5 months, taking 20 months to complete. The final path is A, C, G, and J which takes 27 months to complete if we add 2 months, plus 10 months, plus 7 months, plus 8 months. From this we see that the longest sequence or path is the last path. So we can conclude this to be the critical path of the project. This suggests that activities within this path are critical activities. To now calculate the total float, all you have to do is to identify the shortest path and deduct it from the longest path. Where the shortest path is the earliest project finish time, the longest path is the latest project finish time which is also known as the critical path. From our previous calculations, we know that the shortest path is 15 months while the critical path is 27 months. So, 27 months minus 15 months. This gives us the float of 12 months. This means that the entire project can be delayed for 12 months without it exceeding the project completion date. Now your turn. Let's see if you can determine the critical path and the float for this project here. Before you do this, make sure you first draw the network diagram for the project. Identify the possible paths before calculating the float. Pause the video to complete this task. That will be all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please look forward to our other videos on project management planning tools. See you in the next one.